behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us be in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Please join us in saying Psalm 84, which we will read responsively by half verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. So soul has a desire long to the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Beds of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. Of God, reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold. From those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, Happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
from Jeremiah 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water and a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Jaya, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young re woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so, so are my, my ways higher than your ways, ways and, and my thoughts than your thoughts. thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and, and prosper in that for which, for which I have sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is their measurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Aquileus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure, like many of you, you had to forego certain Christmas traditions this year, certain things that you've done numerous times over the years, and have found a special place in your heart, a special place in your life during this holiday season. One of the ones that I really uh, missed is, at least in my time serving you as the rector of the Church of the Epiphany, we've always sung in the bleak midwinter during the Christmas Eve service. Now, I have to tell you um, that our parish uh, administrator, uh, Lucy Whitlock, this is by far, uh, or maybe perhaps, her least favorite hymn in the entire hymnal. And so I always get a little uh, kick when I uh, turn the music in uh, when we're planning for Christmas Eve services and, and see her face when she says, once again, one of the hymns I've chosen is In the Bleak Midwinter. I don't know why she dislikes it so much, if it's the, the words or the music, uh, but Lucy, if you're watching, um, you're still going to get a little taste of it. Um, because what I'm going to do is read the full poem that that hymn is based on. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed, the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day, breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall before, the ox and ass and camel, which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim throng the air. 
but his mother only, in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give him, give him my heart. One of the reasons why I like this hymn so much and this poem are the beautiful images that it creates in our mind's eye and the theology that it's able to express through those images. One that I, I find so poignant to, to reflect on is the image of Mary with the baby Jesus. This, this baby who brings down angels from heaven to worship him. She alone is the one who holds him so close, so tenderly, is able to share that vulnerability with him and worship him with that vulnerable kiss that only a mother, only a parent can give their newborn child. I also like pairing this poem with our gospel reading for today because one of the central figures in our gospel reading today is Joseph, who isn't in the poem. But I think we get a poignant image of Joseph in the gospel reading. Well, I like to pair it with the imagery of this poem. Now, Herod is aware of Jesus' birth. He's afraid of what Jesus represents and, and the challenge Jesus will make on his own earthly and worldly authority. So he's seeking, seeking Jesus out to kill Jesus, to destroy Jesus, as the gospel says. So Joseph, the head of this small family, the father of Jesus here on earth, receives a dream. As told by God, it's not safe for you, your family, and your son. You must flee. You must leave your homeland. Go to a far and distant land. You must become a refugee and flee for your safety. This poem asks us, what can we give to Jesus? Mary gives that tender kiss. I think what Joseph gives is trust. Trust in God. God tells him to uproot everything, to abandon everything, to take this risky journey, to become a refugee and live in a foreign land. But he trusts in God's plan and purpose for him and for this child. And he trusts that things will be okay. The other thing this poem does is it creates the image of what we, what we can give to Jesus. We're encouraged, we're asked to give our hearts. What might that mean to give our hearts to Jesus? I think we can learn from his two parents what that might mean. Mary gives that vulnerability, that tenderness, that closeness that only a parent and child can share. When we take Jesus into our heart, we take Jesus in to that tenderest of places of our being, that place where we're most vulnerable where our true selves lie. And we can interact with Jesus just as Mary did in that same tender way. And to take Jesus into our hearts is a big leap of faith and trust in God, just as Joseph showed that trust. For to take Jesus into your heart will change you. And you will be called to do extraordinary things things, just as Joseph was. You'll be called to live a life of love, a life of God's love, which knows no boundaries, which knows no borders, a love that this world oftentimes stands in stark contrast to, telling you no, your love is foolish, your love is sentimental, your love won't change anything. 
that we trust in God that this is not the case, that the most powerful force in the world is that love. So as this Christmas season ends and we move into a new year after leaving a year that none of us has ever experienced in living memory, I invite you, I encourage you to take that vulnerable child, that innocent, humble baby, that Christ child, that king of glory into your heart. Nurture it with your tender self, with your vulnerable self. Trust in what Jesus has called you to. Embrace that love. Maybe you'll hear that song of the angels. Maybe you'll hear that awe and wonder of the wise men and the shepherds resonating, ringing through your lives as you follow in the way of love and Jesus Christ. Amen. Lucy, you can let me know later if you like the poem a little better now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O oh God who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to offer up your own prayers, thanksgivings, and intercessions, either silently in your heart out loud, or you can share them online in the chat for us all to partake in. Remember, 
especially Anne, who passed away, keeping her family in our prayers, and wishing them all the compassion and mercy we have in these troubled times, not being able to gather to remember and say goodbye to her. O oh God, in our global distress, we pray earnestly to you. God, our sanctuary, gather us when separated into your presence. God, our physician, heal those who have contracted the virus. God, our comforter, embrace all who mourn the dead. God, our homeland, mother all who are quarantined. God, our friend, accompany all who are alone or afraid. God, our guardian, protect physicians and nurses. God, our hope, assist all who are distributing the vaccine. God, our mighty fortress, preserve our societies from devastation. God, our governor, guide the leaders of nations towards wise policies. God of everlasting arms, in you we live and move and have our being. God, our creator, make once again a world of Sabbath rest. God, our savior, redeem the suffering world by your cross. God, our light, shine your radiant peace into our darkness. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.